Okay, all right, we're gonna go over how to exchange probe tips on an Omniprobe Autoprobe 200, okay? All right, so first thing we gotta do is we gotta vent the chamber, okay? So I'm gonna come over here and just tell the system to vent. All right, it's venting. Um, if your ion source is not on already, you need to turn it on because we are going to need the ion beam when we um, reset the probe tip position. Okay, so now we're gonna wait for that to vent. While we're waiting for it to vent, let's take a look at the table here. These are the tools we're gonna need right here. So this is gonna hold the probe tip shaft. This is the guide to get the probe tip shaft out of the uh, Omni probe. And then you're gonna need some tools here. All right, so the tools you're going to need are a new probe tip, come in boxes like this. They're not very expensive. They're about $10 for each of these probe tips. You're going to need a pair of tweezers. Um, these might work, but I think what I'm going to do, just keep right here. I'm going to grab a different pair actually. You want something that's fairly robust. these guys but we need a pair of tweezers to get these out and then we need a right here I have this marked especially there's a small set screw on the probe tip shaft that keeps the probe tip in place and so we need this to loosen it okay it's just a small hex king uh, hex key Aww. on there yep it's really cool. it's really very little I don't know what the um, <laughs> yeah, what the size of that is. While we're waiting, let's come over here now. Okay, so we have a cover right here on the probe tip shaft that we need to take off. So this rotates back. That just protects the end cap. This right here. This unplugs right here. And then right here, this unscrews, and we can start pulling this out. Okay, to spin the cable? Or? Yep. No problem. Okay, so that's loose now. Okay. So then this guy this has to come out a little bit. And then this sits in here. Can you get it from this angle so we can see this better? Okay. Now this goes in. Okay, this comes in like this. And that supports the probe tip shaft. You can actually see that's kind of aided in the venting process. So, um, once we swap the probe tip, we're also going to need a test sample to put in to do the sharpening as well. So, so at this point, we're just waiting for this to vent. All right, so uh, chamber's vented. Um, the way you can usually tell, by the way, is this hinge here. And this hinge is backed up all the way. Chamber's vented, usually. So you can pull this door. Hmm? Or the yeah, door you can open the door. door. Actually, we don't really have to open the door for the time being. Um, what we're going to do. All right, so we already put this in. So now, pull this out. There's an O-ring. And you're going to feel a little bit of resistance right about here. And then it comes out. This is not really critical when you're taking it out that you have to be careful because we're going to put a new one of these probe tips in. Okay, so don't worry if you like mangle this one per se. All right, so this goes into the guide here. All right, can you zoom in up here? Mm -hmm. Okay, so right here, okay, here's a set screw right here. Okay, so this is what we have to loosen and then we pull the old probe tip out okay so here's where you get your just turn it like a couple turns okay you don't want that coming out because it's a pain to put back in and then this will just pull out throw that in the trash now here is your fresh probe tips you want to be really careful when you pull these out of the box so you don't end up um, mangling the tip right because the tips fresh right now 
So you have to be really careful with this. It's so actually a pair like this is probably better than a pair like this is okay, a sharp pair. Okay, so I'm just going to reach under here and then you want to carefully just grab it out. Okay, and then you put it back in. There you go. And then push this all the way back till it hits a hard stop. Take your hex key and just tighten this down, just like that. Okay, and then once it's nice and snug, you're all set here. All right, so now we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna go back to the chamber. So now here's where you have to be really careful, okay, because you have a nice sharp probe tip. Okay, so start with this up here and then very carefully you bring this down into the groove doesn't matter how it's rotated at all okay and then you're I'm holding this against the guide pushing this in and then right now I'm, I'm feeling the resistance from the o-ring and then you want to push through that there we go okay and now at this point you're okay it's in there you can't really mess up the alignment just push that in this comes out now straight in and now this is just the reverse tighten this guy all the way down when this is tightened all the way down sometimes there's a little uh, there's a little gap here between this ceramic piece and the metal knurling so you want to just push that down so that's flush plug this guy back in over here Okay, and we're also going to show how to do a sharpening of the probe tip. And um, I actually use a sample in the chamber when we do this. So very quickly here, we're gonna open this up. I just have an empty stub here for this. Um, you could use a, a piece of silicon wafer on a stub. That will work just fine. Okay, so that's gonna go in like that. We'll of course have to take this out when you're done, but that's all right. All right, from here, I'm gonna tell it to pump. Give this a second, I'll put this back on the top here. Once this hinge makes contact with this actuator, that's usually when you can stop pushing on the door. All right, so that's good. Okay, now this guy, a little groove there, okay, the cord goes in, like that. Okay, that just covers the end, uh, end of the probe shaft, provides a little bit of uh, protection. Okay, and at this point we are waiting for the chamber vacuum to be reestablished before we can continue. Now keep in mind, because this is an Omniprobe, the um, Omniprobe controls are not integrated into the microscope uh, user interface. Um, this is not the same thing as replacing an easy lift on a, uh, a newer uh, FEI dual beam fib. Okay, so this would be like on an older tool where you have uh, an Omniprobe, which is um, a third party um, Piece of equipment. So there is a separate PC, which we see over here. We have the Omnipro controls on a separate um, monitor, and uh, over here is the microscope UI. Okay, so we already have the um, the fib source on. So and our vacuum is back here. So we're going go ahead and turn on the beams. That's the ion beam. That's the electron beam. Now initially with ion beam. We don't need a lot of current here. I'm just gonna drop this down to 10 picoamps. When we talk about sharpening, we will um, we will adjust that later. Okay, so we have both of our beams on. So I'm gonna start with the electron beam and go live here. All right, so 
so the first question is, let me just check here, let's see where our current is. Okay, so we don't have any current. Just doing a quick adjustment here. There we go. All right, now, now down here quickly, this is the CCD quad right here. Okay, you'll notice when I put in um, the stub, um, I did not move this up at all. Okay, so you can see this is well below the eccentric height and you wanna start with it like that um, initially. Okay, so basically when, when we insert the probe tip, even though we haven't reconfigured its position, there's no chance of it hitting anything when we insert it. Okay, so you, you wanna make sure that we have that, uh, you want this drop down to its lowest position. So this is actually right here, this is the, uh, the aluminum stub surface. So we wanna get just a basic focus here. This looks really cruddy, but not really a problem. Okay, hit the UFO question mark button, which links the working distance with the stage. So we can see here that we're about 11 millimeters away. All right, so from here, we go to the patterning page and we should be able to insert the Omniprobe. So I'm gonna go ahead and check, insert Omniprobe. Okay, and it inserted. So now we got a mag out here. All right, so there is our probe tip. So what we have to do now is we have to manually move this to the coincident point between the two beams. And then we have to tell the Omniprobe software that we have achieved that coincidence point. Okay, so what that means is that we're gonna see the probe tip here centered in both the electron and the ion beam image. So now I'm gonna go over to the probe software here where we move around and I'm gonna to switch to velocity mode. And I'm gonna start with the E-beam. I'm just gonna move this guy to the center here. All right, so you can see it moving and you can also see that it's out of focus because I'm not focused on the same plane, but that's not really a problem right now. Okay, I'm gonna mag in a little bit here. Okay, so now if I wanna get a rough idea here, I'm adjusting the focus here so I get my probe tip. Okay, so my probe tip is basically focused right now and I'm at three millimeters. Okay, so basically I'm about a millimeter high versus where it should be, okay? So again, I'm gonna stick with the E-beam here and just get it centered. And now I'm gonna switch to the ion beam, go live. Okay, and now I know I'm at three millimeters, my probe tip here, okay? I need to bring it down to four millimeters. So now in the Omniprobe software, I'm gonna to go to the Z control and I'm gonna go down with the Z. Okay, so I'm at 20 microns a second right now. I could probably go to 50. We don't wanna be here longer than we need to be. We should see it coming in from the top. The top right, I should say. Oop, bottom, actually, because we don't have the scan rotation on. Not really a problem. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the E-beam. Go ahead and refocus. Whenever you're moving the probe tip, you always wanna use X, Y with the E-beam, and then you wanna use Z with the ion beam. Now you notice um, these are pretty close. Okay, so I'm at uh, a field width of 60 microns indicated um, 2.5 kx, that's fine for doing this. Um, so you notice there's a slight discrepancy here. I'm not quite coincident. That's because there's a little bit of a difference in the beam shift between these two, but this is perfectly passable. Okay, so once I have this, I go back to the Auto Pro software. In my locations here, I click Eucentric. I click Edit Store. It says, do you want to update? And you say yes. Okay, so what you're gonna see here right now is these current positions for this stage, these are all gonna get set to zero once I click yes. Okay, because that's my new Eucentric position. Okay, so this completes the installation at this point. Okay. And uh, so the next thing from here we can discuss is actually, now, well, actually, before we do that, so 
you can see here with the E-beam, or the I-beam for that matter, right now here at the tip, I've got a nice sharp tip, and this is gonna work really well initially for doing lift outs and attaching lamellas, but I don't have to cut a whole lot off here before I start getting a really blunt probe tip here, and it makes you know doing lift outs kind of tricky. So what I'm gonna show you guys next is how to do a sharpening with this with the ion beam to basically extend the life of this and allow you to get more use out of it before you have to do a replacement. All right, so we're gonna go over uh, a method to sharpen the probe tip. So this again is at um, the coincidence point here. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is actually put this in park. So go over to the uh, auto probe software and then put it in park. So the park position basically is where I've moved this about a millimeter off to the left and about a millimeter up in the Z. Um, and of course, as you can see in the CCD quad here, this is our stub and you know, here's our, you can actually see it here slightly. You can see the probe tip. We are really far away from that. So we're not in danger of hitting anything. Once this goes into park, this will stop saying moving here. We can just take the, um, the Omni probe out basically done here if it says 0.1 and moving you can just click it and then just uncheck insert omniprobe and you can see it's gone okay so now what we're gonna do is we are going to bring this stub to the eccentric position okay so let's go ahead and find the surface here okay, there it is this nasty surface of this aluminum stub Hit the UFO button. Okay. And approximately four millimeters is the eccentric working distance. I am going to do a rigorous setting of the eccentric height as well. I'm going to use this guy as the reference piece of crud. And we're still basically in focus. I'm not going to worry about aligning the E-beam here. I know it's a little bit out of alignment, but it's not terribly important here. So I'm tilting now to 26 degrees. You can see this is moving down. So that means I'm actually a little too low with the height. So moving this stage up to bring that back to the middle. Right there. Now I'll tilt to 52. And you can see this is moving down a little bit, but not quite as bad. And bring that back up to the center. Okay, there we go. All right, and then tilt back to zero. We'll see how badly this goes off. We might need to do another iteration, but I'm guessing no. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the probe tip in and we are going to approach it down and actually touch it on the surface. Um, that's going to keep it fixed in place and from moving around while we sharpen it. If we have it suspended in vacuum, it tends to move a little too much and that makes doing the sharpening um, just a little too tricky. Okay. All right. So we're pretty close here. So actually what I'm going to do here, I'm going to tilt back to 52 and I'm going to use the ion beam just to cut a little fiducial here in the surface. So there you can see the hole we're digging. Aluminum's pretty soft as far as fibbing is concerned. So that's fine. So we'll tilt back to zero here. So 
So now we have a very recognizable feature, so that will allow us to get the coincidence points here configured just a little bit better. basically not moving. Okay, so I'm going to use that guy as my reference there, and let me drop the current down here again. Okay, so this guy is, should be up here, so I'm going to use my beam shifts on the MUI knobs here, okay? Now remember, you're looking at an angle here because the stage is zero with the ion beam, okay? So you're not normal anymore. But now we're coincident, okay? So now we can insert the Omniprobe. When we insert it, because we put it in park, it's not gonna hit anything, okay? So you can see here, there's the probe tip way out here and about a millimeter above the surface. So now what we're gonna do is drive it to what's called eucentric high. If we come over here and click eucentric high, click go to. Does eucentric high automatically update when you update eucentric? Uh, yes, it does. Very good question, but yes. That's exactly what happens. Park updates, eucentric high updates every time you update eucentric. All right, so there's my probe tip. And now I'm going to bring it down and touch it to the surface. There it is. Actually, what I'm going to do here to help my eyes, my mind think a little more clearly, did a scan rotation. So now this is top down. second I'm just gonna drive it into the surface you're gonna see it move just a little bit boom right there okay so you saw a touch and then kind of go to the left okay so now we're on the surface all right so now we can talk about sharpening this guy okay so um, it's purely a matter of preference how much you sharpen this how far back you go okay so I like to go back you know, maybe 50, 60 microns. You can see the scale bar here. Obviously this is at an angle, so the actual distance is substantially longer than this, okay? But um, let's increase the current here. You can go to, go to 15 nanoamps. You can use something fairly large for this. Okay, get a good focus. That's I am being current, right? That's right ion beam current. All right, and now there's a bunch of ways you can do this. Um, I'm just going to use the um, use the polygon pattern here. Okay, so I'm going to do uh, two cuts here. Okay, so the first one I'm going to do is from the top here. So I'm going to draw a line just along kind of the probe tip shaft here, and then kind of normal. Out like yay. Okay, so all this is going to get basically milled away right here. Take another snap. And that's good enough. Go ahead and 
start. And we can actually see this here in the area. We can kind of see this milling away. We should also be able to see it here when we kind of take snapshots. There we go. We can see it milling out. And we probably could have maybe made this a little bit wider back, but so just as a general rule, if you are careful with the Omniprobe, you only need to take out about a micron every time you do a lift out. So realistically, you know, that's 30 microns. Again, we're viewing this at, I think it's, a, it's not quite 45 degrees. So, you know, you do the math, that's what root two multiply by that. So you're talking about maybe 50 microns long. So, you know, in theory, this should probably last 45, 50 lift outs, really before you have a problem. Um, by the time we're done with it anyway. If you don't do this, um, it's gonna get really blunt at the end here, really quick. That's not to say you can't use it. I've actually seen uh, people do some remarkable things with rather blunt Omnipro tips, but it just works a little bit better. So that's still going right there. Once this top surface is done, um, we're going to do the same thing underneath, basically. So we're going to end up with kind of like a sliver left over. Getting there. So this surface here that we're when we're milling this, um, this might not look you know incredibly aesthetically pleasing when we're done. Meaning it might kind of look rough, but that's not necessarily a problem um, in terms of um, its effectiveness at you know lifting out lamellas. So. Don't worry if it you know, has some striations, has some kind of gouges in it. It's not really a problem, aside from it just kind of looking bad. You can see this is clinging up here still, so let this go. So there's basically three um, three mills we're gonna do here. We're gonna do this one. We're gonna, we're gonna do one underneath. Then we're gonna rotate the uh, the probe shaft, and we're gonna do another one at a different angle. So it's basically three um, three mills here. Question? You wanna rotate it up there? Yeah, we'll rotate it up there. Oops, that was that one. Uh, didn't mean to take an I beam snapshot. All right, I think we're good here. I'm going to stop it. Okay. So that mill was a, you timed it manually. That's right. I just um, I'm just going by what I'm seeing in the E beam. Um, there's no. I'm not like running it. You know, some predetermined. I'm running it until it's basically done. So. All right. So we're gonna do the same thing now, but from the bottom. Andres, do you want me to pick over? No, Andres, okay. All right, so what I, I'll just draw another pattern. I'll keep the, um, I'll keep the polygon here. All right, so this one, I'm gonna, you wanna be careful not to be too aggressive with this, um, because if you are, you will end up milling your probe tip away. So that actually looks okay. And this is a little tough to see because now in the E-beam, that's actually like the bottom side, we can't see it, but we'll be able to see the shadow of it under here while it's cutting. So you can see right there, there's the shadow. And we can 
do the same thing here where we so we're trying to get this probe tip shaft um, the, the final thickness you know ideally you want something around uh, you know two three micrometers um, within reason kind of you know the closer to like two three the better the more effective it is obviously you don't want it you know too thick and see we're kind of eating into the surface here that's not really a problem because what we're going to end up doing here you'll see in a minute whoops snapshots what are we doing here see right here there's still a little bit there and you can see it's kind of bending just a little bit but that's not really a problem um, it's gonna drift on us a little bit here it's just the nature of these Omni probes is they tend to move a little bit right, I think we're almost good here to stop all right I'm gonna stop this one okay and now I'm going to go back down to 10 picoamps. I'm going to get rid of this pattern. All right, and I'm going to go to the probe software here and just lift up. All right, so there's my mag out here so you can see this. All right, there's my probe tip shaft right here. Okay. All right, if I see it here in the... There it is in the E-beam as well. So now, what we're gonna do, okay, so looking in the E-beam, this is now, actually in the I-beam here, so now this is, uh, why can't I tell where it is? There it is right there, okay? So this is now like a sliver right here, okay? What we have to do now is we have to rotate um, the probe tip shaft. Okay, so we're going to rotate the probe tip shaft so in the E-beam now this if this is my hand is the this flat part it's going to go like this okay so we're looking like perfectly edge on with E-beam okay so I'm going to take the Z control of the probe software and I'm just going to drive this really high I'm going to drive this up so you can see the Z here I'm going to drive this up to at least half a millimeter just to give us plenty of space and we'll go close to a millimeter just to be safe all right and now i'm going to focus so now we are well above the surface okay and now we're going to go to the probe shaft here we have to take the cover off of course okay so now the angle between the two beams is 52 degrees okay so now we have to rotate this guy in theory, okay? 52 degrees clockwise, okay? And that will give us the right orientation, okay? So you can use some kind of landmarks on here. It's just a rough idea. And you can see we lost the probe tip. So I'm gonna come back here and periodically, where are we? There we are right there. I'm just going to have to switch to the XY control and recenter it. All right, so you can see we're getting closer in terms of being edge on. Whoops. All right, still closer. And again, we moved a little bit. So we're almost there. We got a little bit more. We can twist it. That really jumps quite a bit. All right, we're pretty close. We can probably just a couple more degrees. This will be a nitpicky here. Okay. 
All right, so that's pretty good right there. Okay, so basically we're straight edge on here with that sliver we've made. Hi everyone. So sorry to interrupt the video, but just wanted to stop and point out that at this point you need to replace the black cover over the probe tip shaft. When you add the cover back on, that does impart a very small mechanical motion and movement to the uh, probe tip. And uh, it might not seem like a lot, but that's enough to throw off your positioning and affect your stored setting for eucentric position. So you always want to make sure to put that cover back on before you end up going and setting eucentric position in the probe software. If you set it first and then put the cover back on, then it's not going to be accurate because of that small amount of motion that putting the cover back on imparts. Okay, back to the video. Okay, so now what we've got to do is reapproach it down to the sample surface. And in doing so, because now we've done all this twisting, we've done all this movement, our eucentric height is no longer accurate. Okay, so we've got to basically reconfigure that. Okay, so now we know the sample surface is still at eucentric height. So we can just bring it back down. Okay, so I'm looking at the, my, my surface is in focus, my probe shaft is not, so I can see as it gets closer. Okay, at this point, you don't want to drive this into the surface, so you'll mangle it. Okay, so you can switch to the the I-beam, that's better for seeing the Z response. Oh, there it is, okay. All right, and again, just like I did before, so now we're pretty close, I'm just gonna very gently drive this till it touches the surface. Oops. All right, so there's my... Now obviously, this is not the most, you know, aesthetically pleasing looking probe tip, but if we do just a rough and uh, rough and dirty, quick and dirty measurement here, okay, we can see. Whoops, come on, rectangle. Okay, let me turn off cross section correction. Done. Yeah, so this is uh, you know around around two microns, give or take. Okay, so this is really good in terms of dimensions for welding to the uh, lamellas. Okay, so aside from it maybe not looking terribly nice. It will work perfectly fine otherwise. And there's one more thing we're going to do to help clean it up. Okay, so I'm going to drive it into the surface here. We're going to see a touch right about, boom, there. All right. And actually, you know what I'm going to do? Um, let me reconfigure eucentric. So now we're coincident here. So I'm going to do again eucentric and then edit store. I'm going to pop this up just a little bit. And I'm actually going to move the stage over here. So I don't have all that crud in the background. Just to make this a little easier to see. Okay, there we go. All right. So now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to do one more cut here. Okay, so now this is a lot thinner than what we had before, so we can use less current. We used 15 nanoamps before. I'm going to drop down to 5 for this. So we have this bottom edge here. This bottom edge is nice and sharp. This top edge is kind of raggedy, so we're actually going to trim this top edge down here. Polygon. So I'm going to start right there. Drag along like that. And just like that. And I think we'll probably let's see if I can. All right, I think we're good to go there. And move this up just a little. Okay, let's do it. All right, so we should be able to watch this melt away. 
We're not cutting through a whole lot here. Let's see if we can see it here in this guy. Uh, not quite. There we go. As you can see it's going. It's going to take a little while. So yes, again, uh, I would expect this with uh, proper love and care to last probably close to 50 lift outs. And then do you sharpen it again? No, I just put a new one in. Okay. Put a new one in and sharpen it. Uh, almost never, though. Almost never does it reach end of life because, you know, <laughs> it legitimately gets to 50 lift outs. Pretty much always what happens is, you know, somebody just drives it into the surface and bends it prematurely, but a person can dream. Crud up here to go away. Andre, you're a champion for holding his elbow. You are. Thank you very much. Well, he's got elbow support. Yeah, that's a good, <laughs> much better position. <laughs> uh, do it. So doing this um, on the P fib with the easy lift um, is a lot easier, uh, in my opinion. Um, if we ever, uh, you know, get around to doing that at some point. But there are still plenty of these Omniprobe uh, systems in the field. I believe Omniprobe is still, you know, they're still in business. They're still making Omniprobes. I don't know if they go on FEI dual beam systems anymore because now FEI has their own easy lift. So I don't know who they're working with. They might be working with uh, TestScan, for all I know. They might be going on those systems. So again, it's it's critical after we um, after we did those two the first two cuts, right? We had to lift up the probe tip, we had to rotate it, we had to then reconfigure the eccentric position. Um, every time you do that, if you if you choose to do the probe shaft rotation like we did, your eccentric position is going to get thrown off, and you have to reconfigure it. And when you actually like weld this on here um, to the lamellas, the top side of this isn't, you know, terribly involved. Usually the side that's mostly involved is actually um, like the tip surface here, per se. But it does help having this not like too thick in the, in the vertical direction here. You don't want it to be excessively large like that. I think we're good. So, um, all right, last couple things here to tie this up. Let me go back to 10 pico amps here. And we'll just take a look at our handiwork here so we can kind of see 
All right, so we got maybe a little bit. Now there's a little bit of crud here on the end. So the last thing we can do here, just to be uh, nice here, hey, we can actually kind of just square this up really quickly. Squaring up the end here. Do you have it touching the surface again? I do. Yeah. I'm close here. We just got a little bit of a nub left. Perfect. We're all set here. Got a nice sharp edge. There we go. All right, so there's our final sharpened tip. So go ahead and put it in park. And we can see it flying away. And again, if you're really ambitious, you can always, you know, sharpen this, you know, further back. I try to sharpen at least like, you know, 50, 60 microns. And it's almost in park here. And then we retract it. And that is that. <laughs>